What is up everyone? I hope you're all good. So you might have seen a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago, whenever this video is out, I went to Aquarium Gardens with MD Fish Tanks and I picked up a load of hardscape and I want to try something a little bit different, something that I've never done before. So what do I want to try? You'd have seen it in the thumbnail already. I want to try like a black water inspired aquarium. I don't want to go full black water, but I definitely want a lot of botanicals in there. Now I've used botanicals before, I've used them in the store, I've used them at home, but I've never done one myself full on like lots of botanicals leaf litter in the bottom i think it's gonna be really cool i've got this thing in my mind muddy river bank trees coming out flooded forest sort of star and i think it's gonna work really well <laughs> The tank we're going to be using for it is this Awazi Scapeline 60. It's a 60 centimetre, but it's 75 litres. So it's going to give me enough space to mess around with, but it's not going to be too big and bulky. So as I've already said, the idea in my head is this like muddy riverbank sort of thing. But no one wants mud and brown and horribleness in their front room as a display. But I think I can make this look quite nice by using scaping materials to simulate this muddy riverbank. So the plan is maple leaf rock, which is this like orangey cool i don't know what you call it like weird rock that's what i'm going to call it weird rock i'm going to have that piled up in the aquarium to create my brown sort of riverbank i have got some orange sand around here somewhere that i've misplaced and then we've got the manzanita wood that i also picked up from aquarium gardens um, and that's going to be coming you might not be able to see it out the top as these big like tree structures like i say flooded forest riverbank i think it's going to work out really well now at the moment this is just a glass box so we need equipment what we're going to be running on this one well it's actually a new filter hang on i've got the box here somewhere it's an oasi bio plus thermo 100 there you go um not a sponsored video just the reason is because it's got a heater built into the back but yeah i've never seen one before with a heater built into the back i'm sure there's other ones out there but yeah that one's going to be going in this back corner now the light hang on i've misplaced the light Right, so I got the light. It's actually turned itself on because it's the time of day that it's meant to turn on. So this is an AI Prime 16 Freshwater HD. I don't know. It's an AI Prime 16, I think. This is the Freshwater version. And that's going to clamp in that back corner because I want the trees to grow up around that. I say grow. They're just going to be sat there. But trees are going to go around that. Trees are going to go around that. I'm going to have to keep the trees away from the filter to make sure I've got access to it because I want it to be obviously popping that front casing off and pulling it out um but yeah i think that'll be the equipment sorted now because i don't normally use internal filters i do have to mess around with the tank a little bit more than normal because i don't want to restrict the front of this filter so i can get it out in the future obviously we're going to need to take that face here plate off to maintain it but we are going to have to remove the whole thing as well to maintain the impeller and stuff like that so what i'm thinking is if i place just a couple of pebbles and it sounds a bit weird but if i do that that is going to stop me from placing any rocks right back against that filter and stop me from getting in there you won't see those rocks once it's fully scaped but it just means that hopefully it's going to hold everything away from it the next job i want to get done is i want to get the manzanita wood so that i can glue it in place now it's not necessarily gluing it into the tank what i want to do is the bottoms are cut at funny angles so what i want to try and do is cut them as straight as i can so that it sits upright and then i'm either going to glue them or zip tie them to a rock so it's got something to anchor it down so i'm going to get that done on these probably two or three big bits the little bits i should be able to just wedge in and sort of anchor it in different places but the big bits i do need to glue behind the scenes and make sure they're stuck down Now that all the bottoms are cut straight, what I'm going to do, well, actually, what I was going to do is glue them. But I've realised that they're so big and sort of chunky, I think it's going to be really tricky to glue them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the wood in a couple of spots, get a cable tie, and then I'm just going to loop the cable tie around these pieces of slate and essentially cable tie them to the pieces of slate, which I think will work a treat because I can wedge those bits of slate underneath the other rock. There we go, that actually worked better than I thought. I've done a think test, not on that one, on that one. So I dropped it into a tank and it sunk down. I did put two zip ties on the first one, but it doesn't actually need it. One zip tie is really sufficient. On some of the big ones, I've done two big bits of slate, but I'll cut these zip ties off 
but that'll just mean I can anchor them down and sink them into the tank now. So we've got all our wood ready. I might need a couple more bits, I'm not sure. I've done four. We'll see how that works. We'll see how much that fills up the tank. So next thing, we need some substrate. And then when I say substrate, just going sand on this one. And then we can start scaping with our rocks. Like I said at the start, we're going for an orangey sort of sand. I think the main plan is going to be a dual island sort of thing going on. Maybe one taller than the other. I definitely want to try and hide that light unit in amongst the trees. Um, yeah, I think that's going to work. I think that's going to be okay. Now the fun begins. Let's start playing around and see if we can get these woods and rocks all orchestrated into one sort of riverbank themed tank. I was just going to start rocking up the tank and I realised that obviously this stuff is quite sharp because of the sort of ridges, the lines you've got, it is quite sharp. So what I'm actually going to do, the only thing I've got nearby is a crowbar and I'm just going to run this over the edge of it and then that actually stops it from being sharp in certain places. It's going to be a bit of a job to do it all and it's going to get quite messy but at least that way I've got no sharp edges for the fish to catch themselves on. Now that I've spent some time smoothing down all those rocks, now we can get scaping. So some of these have got amazing textures on the front. So those are the ones that I want to be showing forward. Like the backside of this isn't as exciting. Well, I suppose it's a bit more pitted, so it's quite exciting. But this front edge, it's got loads of little crystals in it. I think you can see there. So these I want facing outwards. I want all the cool bits of rock to face forwards. And those pebbles that have been behind, see, I can't push that rock back any further than that. So that's perfect. But yeah, let's get these big bits in first because they're going to make our main structure of our skate. Yeah, I'm going to try and keep that central path just off centre. Oh, there's bits of rock everywhere now. got our main rock structure going on I'm liking how that's come out now we've got to get those big trees wood bits in here which is going to be tricky um yeah I think it'll be okay though let's uh let's see how we get on I might have to move a few rocks to get these in though That was a bit of a nightmare to get all that wood positioned and not let it fall over. I've added some sand in the back just to give it a bit of more anchoring, but those bits of slate worked a treat just like sitting them down and it held them up. You might be able to see just, I've moved the light unit so it's sort of lighting it from the front. I'm really not sure if to put plants in here. I'm, I know I know botanicals, hang on. I've got, I've got like these jackfruit leaves. I think they're really cool. I think they're jackfruit or guava. No, they're jackfruit. Um, I think they're gonna look really cool in here. I've got some oak leaves that I sort of collected, um, so maybe a sprinkling of them, but I really can't work out whether it needs plants or not. Do you know what? I think the key is, I think we're going to fill it up, get it filled, get it running, leave it a week. I can get the botanicals in then, and we'll see how the tank progresses. It might not need any plants. I'm just thinking everything's really colour coordinated. If I got some like orangey tetras or something like that in there, I think it would look really cool. It's all that oranges and red. Uh, yeah, let's get it filled up and then we're going to decide whether we're going to put plants in it or not. We are full. Now it's a bit, well it's not murky actually, it's just cold look. You can see into it. So it's not that bad. I thought it was going to be a lot uh, murkier than that, but it's a little bit of dust, nothing too bad. Obviously we've got to add some tap water safe and some filter starter just to make sure that that is all ready and raring to go. Uh, five mil per 50 litres, I think it is. Never remember, 10 mil per 50 litres. Okay, cool, so 50 litres, double. So it's about 15 mil, cool. So we'll get this added in there. That's gonna make the water safe and get rid of all of the nasty stuff that they put in it to make it safe for us. And it'll be the same on this one because the dosages are the same. And then what we've got to do is leave it. Now, once we've left it for a little, I can decide whether I'm gonna put plants in there. Oh, I suppose it'd be good to turn the filter on, wouldn't it? Uh, that one, beautiful. 
Oh, I like it. Now it's just a waiting game. I want to get some botanicals in here, so I'll make sure I record that bit and uh, give you the lowdown on what botanicals we're going to put in here. And then it's just deciding whether plants are going in or not. I, I can already tell that I'm going to get wrecked in the comments, depending on what I do. I reckon there'll be a load of you that want plants in here, and I reckon there'll be a load of you that don't want plants in here. So whatever I do, I feel like it's going to be a wrong decision for someone. But yeah, I'm going to live with it for a week, maybe, well, maybe a couple of days. We'll see and go from there. But yeah. Let's see what it does. We're back after a few days. It's looking awesome. The water's already starting to go a little bit tanned and a little bit orange. So that's really nice that we're seeing that. But there are a few things that I need to change about it. The scape's fine, but it needs some additions. Now we know one of those changes is going to be botanicals. We've got to add some botanicals in here because that's the effect of look we're going for, that leafy litter bottom. But there's a few other things. It's missing a few smaller branches. At the moment, the scape feels a little bit two tier for me. So you've got this rock, tier one, wood tier two it needs to be divided with some smaller branches maybe in here and here that are completely submersed under the water sort of like the smaller sapling trees i guess you would get on the river bank so what i've got is a spare piece of manzanita wood i'm just going to trim off a few of these smaller branches to allow me to stick a few smaller ones in the tank so we're going to get that done first and then i'll discuss with you the plans that i've got afterwards for above the tank Now you might have just seen me cut one off of this big branch here. That is because I really want this one to sort of angle round a bit more and be a bit more there rather than right in the back of the tank. It was sort of pulling too far towards the front and that's much better. So I've got these three little branches. I'm really hoping I don't need to glue these to anything. This one's always already soaking wet. So I'm hoping to be able to just like wedge him in amongst these rocks here. And hopefully that one will stay there. Maybe. Why is that not? I must be hitting another rock. Hey, I'm gonna have to get the arms wet. There we go. And these will look a bit weird at the moment because they're so white, but they will blend in eventually. So I think that one needs to come into there. So it looks like it's growing from that pocket there. And they don't actually, oh, they do float. They definitely do flow. I'm going to bury that one in sand and hope it just takes on enough water in the next couple of hours. And then this one, I think that one needs to go into there. Obviously, these will go darker over the next few days once they take on some water, like the others have done. So it won't be too bad. That's way better. It looks a bit weird, like I say, because they are white, but they will eventually go this darker colour. It's only been a couple of days that they've already gone that darker colour. So once they go that darker colour, it'll blend in a little bit better. Now, my next plan might be a mistake, but hear me out. The next thing I want to add to this, after living with this scape for a few days, uh, it's a little bit crazy, but I think it'll blend the top with the bottom. And that is, hang on, where's they done? I harvested a load of oak leaves, and I'm gonna glue a load of them to these branches. The oak leaves are gonna go in the bottom as well eventually, so there'll be a leaf scattering in the bottom. But I just think it'll be really cool to have maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 leaves glued to all these little branches just so it looks like it's an actual tree that's sort of died in the winter or died because of the flooding and it's dropping all its leaves into the tank. I think it will just, yeah, join the two bits of scape together. I might regret this because this might take a while, but we're gonna give it a go. Let's glue my fingers to a load of wood and uh, leaves and see how we get on with this. Now there's an hour of my life I'm never going to get back. Now it wasn't too bad, probably 20 minutes spent gluing those up. I think I want more out of there, but I'm going to leave it there because in all honesty, my fingers were starting to hurt. And uh, as you saw, the rubber glove had to come out because I have glued my fingers together quite a few times doing that. Yeah, what we're going to do now is we're going to get the botanicals in. So I'm going to use some oak leaves to start. I have got the other leaves somewhere around here um, that I might use a few of just as a few highlight bigger pieces but we're gonna get a good handful of oak leaves in there now. Now, depending on what you want to do, there is a couple of different ways of preparing botanicals. You can just chuck them in and let them sink and float down as you were. You can soak them for a few days, you can boil them. What I'm gonna do in this one is I'm gonna boil them because one, it gets them to sink faster, and two, it gets rid of that initial boost of tannins. Not that I mind it, but I don't really want that massive hit of like brown water. I just want that slight tint in this tank. And it's already, to be fair, with the oranges, 
It's already looking tanned anyway without actually having anything in there. Right, so I've got my jug of boiling water. We are just going to grab a handful of these and chuck them in. I nearly dipped my hand in that then, just to push them under the water. I think that'll be enough for the minute. I've got to find something to dip these under the water. I found my little brush that I normally use to like brush the uh, sand off of rocks. So I'll give that a quick stir. Look at that, nice little mug of oak leaf tea. So while the oak leaf tea is brewing, I'm not sure what plants to go with, if any. Katie thinks I should go with like an orange and red vibe to keep the sort of flow of that orange and red sort of autumnal look going. I suppose a little bit like the angelfish tank I've done with MD fish tanks recently. I'm not sure, I still can't picture that in my head, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to the shop in a bit and just see what plants they've got turned up. Hopefully it just sort of triggers my mind and go, yeah, that, that's going to work. One bit of planting that I am sure on is I want some plants just above the waterline, nothing massive, but just a few. And I've got a plant downstairs that I think will work a treat. I have used it above aquariums before and it works. The only problem is I need to work out a way, or I needed to work out a way. Needed, I've worked it out. Now what I was gonna do is just pin them to the back like I normally do, but I don't really wanna do that on this setting. But what I have got is some Thalumbo pods. So these are just a, like a, a seed pod, I suppose? But well, I thought they make excellent planters. Look at that. Now they do float, but they obviously won't float forever. They will take on water at some point and they will sink. So my plan is, well, let me show you. So on this side, it's really easy because we've actually got a V in the wood where this the lumbo pod sits really nicely. Now I think it will let a bit of water in, but it obviously won't get really damp in there. So that sits there really nicely and makes a planter. Irritatingly, I haven't got anything over on that side, but what I'm thinking is, you know me and my love of cable ties, I might be able to wrap a cable tie around that branch and have it sort of sat just on the water. And then I can hopefully fill it with plants. Um, let me grab a zip tie and see if we can make this happen. Right, so I've got one of these brown zip ties. What I'm thinking is if I wrap that around there and then have the branch sat in this like crevice here, we should be able to get it to sort of sit. Uh, so I need to, uh, yeah, I need to put it around this branch first. This is where I knock all my leaves off. I wonder if I can just get the first clip on that. I don't know if one's gonna be big enough actually. See, I told you, knew I was going to drop a leaf. Oh, this wasn't going to be enough. I'm making that little. Another leaf fell off. Oh yeah, I think that's going to work. Right, we've got our plant. This is Fitonia. So it is continuing on with that red theme a little bit, which, yeah, I think will be fine. We're just going to take the majority of the soil off. Maybe pop a little bit of sand or something in the bottom of the ponds just so that they've got something to root into a little bit. And then, yeah, we're just going to sit them. A couple of clumps. Obviously, I'm not going to need that whole pot. But yeah, a couple of clumps of that just sat in there. I think that'll look really nice growing up amongst it. These Falumbo pods might go a bit soft over time, so I will have to keep an eye on them that they don't sink down into the tank. But it's not hard to replace a couple of these little pods once in a while. Now to add something that they're going to root into, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a few tiny scoops of flora base. So that's like the uh, substrate. I've seen uh, someone online using this to grow houseplants, so I don't see why it wouldn't work in this setting. It will retain a little bit of moisture and have the plants root into something. Cool. Right, let's see if we can get this first one planted up. So we want to try and keep these smaller ones towards the front. This is very tricky with these trees here. There we go. And then the bigger ones towards the back. So that's it for the minute for today. We're gonna to get the oak leaves in and get the botanicals sort of started, let them settle. I'm gonna give it another day or so. I'm gonna go and see what plants I can get. Maybe some reds, some dark greens, something like crypts, or maybe some stem plants. Maybe some dark red or dark green stem plants might work in here. I don't want anything bright green because I think it's just gonna 
spoil the look of it, to be honest. Um, and I'm now thinking Rummy Nose Tetra could be cool, but I've got so many ideas in my head. Anyway, let's get these leaves in and then we'll see how it settles for the next couple of days. Some people will pour the water in. Ah, uh, oh, do you know what? I don't mind the tanned water, it's not that bad. Let's just get it in there. Now I might need to turn the filter down a bit just to stop them wafting about too much, but as long as they find somewhere to settle nice, then I'll be happy. We're back from the shop. Sorry I didn't take you with me. I didn't take my camera, but it was busy anyway, so I didn't spend long there. We've got some red plants. So, hang on, let me show you. We've got some more Altenanthera, which is the plant I've already got some bits of that's been growing in another tank. So I've stolen them out of the other tank. So yeah, we've got Altenanthera, Altenanthera cardinalis. Ooh, pretty. So that's just, I, I went for the darker one. There is a variegated one that's a little bit brighter, but I went for the darker one because I don't want the colors to be too bright. And then the other plant that we got out there, Ludwigia palastris super mini red. So again, it's got greens, it's quite dark. I think it will suit the tones of this tank quite well. The other thing I've just pulled out of another tank that were sort of getting too much anyway, are these big crypts. I can't remember for the life of me what type they are. I'll probably split them actually. But I think those in the darker areas will look really nice. And then the red plants will go in the brighter areas because they're going to need that little bit more light. The other thing I'm going to do where I put these plants, I've just got some of the Nutri caps. So I'll put some of the Nutri caps next to each plant that I plant in just to give them a little bit more food and a little bit more sustenance. I can use liquid fertilizers in here, which I will do. But yeah, should be ideal. Those two things should cover it. Oh, let's get these plants sorted and get them in. First up, we need to prep all our plants. So we're just going to give the pot a bit of a squeeze and we should be able to get that rock well out. Take the label off and the weight. And then hopefully we should be able to break this apart and get into each of the bits of plant. Obviously you can see there's two stems there. So what we're going to do is divide them all up and get them ready for planting in the tank. Trusty tweezers, got some plant nutrient caps. Now all that's left to do is get it all in there. So I think we're gonna go start in the back. This area here is quite dark, so that's gonna be perfect for a couple of these crypts to go in. Crypts don't like that much light, so they should get on really well back here. Next, we're gonna go for some Altenanthera, probably in these two back corners. Lastly, we've got the Ludwigia Palastrus Red. Doing the planting has murked it up a little bit, so it's gone a little bit misty. But that's not the end of the world. We can just leave this now. We've got our reds in, we've got our Ludwigias, we've got our crypts that you can hardly see in the back because of how milky it is now. But we're going to give this a few days to clear, see what it looks like. I think we might be done then. I don't think we need to add any more to it. So, uh, yeah, hopefully the next time I record this tank, we can get some fish in there. We are back. It's so clear. It's been, I don't know now, seven, eight days since I set it up. Maybe, I can't even remember. It's been been about a week, maybe just over, and it has cleared up so well. Now I have put an extra plant in, um, this big crypt that I had downstairs in one of the tanks. I just took it out because it was sort of right at the front and a bit imposing. So now it's in the back of this tank. Actually, let me take you off. I'll show you around the tank properly. Yeah, so that's the big crypt I was talking about. You can see him in front of the filter there. Yeah, it's really chunky. But yeah, that was just in the front of a tank downstairs, so it didn't need to be in the front of a tank downstairs. Yeah, Altenanthera, the Ludwigia Palastrus Red, all the little oak leaves along the bottom there, the other crypt in the back. Nothing's melted yet, which is a bonus, and the Altenanthera back there. Everything's doing really well. Oh, this thing, this Fitonia, oh, that's bright. Um, That, uh, so that is a horrible plant covered in hairs that makes my arms really, really itchy. Um, so yeah, be careful if you use that because it is a bit, yeah. You can sort of see the hairs there. I don't know if I'll be able to focus on them, but yeah, it literally couldn't work out why my arms were so itchy. Everything is mature, everything's ready to go. I've used some old tank media um, in that filter. So that's perfect, that's matured really nicely. 
obviously hopefully now because of how porous this rock is a lot of that will be inhabiting good bacteria as well so i think we're ready for fish the one thing i want to do before i go looking up at my trees i've got a couple of these lights now they're fluval prisms now what they are i've got one plugged in uh do i just there we go Ooh. so it's just a little spotlight really simple i think it's got a lens cover on it as well anyway i want to hang them in the trees so that they like down light so when i don't want to use this main big light i can just have these two little spotlights sort of shimmering in the water so i'm going to get that done before i go get fish i just think it will look cool if you're looking for like a interesting like aesthetic -y sort of weird thing to go in your tank i think spotlights are cool if you're chilling out and you want something just like a little bit lower light especially if it's near your tv you just want to turn off the main lights and just have one light little spotlights like that are perfect so i think one or two of them i'll try one and then we'll try two we're going to get them installed i'm just going to hang them from the trees and then we'll go get some fish so i've hung one of the spotlights up let me pull the blinds oh ow That's way better. So let me show you. Let me just turn the AI off. Uh, 10 minutes. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. And this one comes with one of these little controllers. So you can change all the different, oh, red, green, blue. So I'm not gonna use obviously all the different colors, but I like this sort of yellowy look to it. It's going quite red on the camera because it's picking up the different LEDs, but I think that just looks a bit cool. If you wanted sort of a bit of mood lighting for your fish, if they're ever feeling in the uh, romantic mood, then a little spotlight, perfect. Let's turn those lights back on. Now, I know Fluval said to me recently that those lights are gonna be discontinued soon. So if you do want one, you'll have to get one soon. Um, but yeah, I just think they're cool. A little bit different if you want like that spotlight, that cave sort of vibe, just adds to the aquarium, I think. It's a little bit different. You can sit back, chill out, turn your main lights off and just have that one illuminating. But yeah, next, we're done, we're ready. We need to go pick up some fish. It's gonna be a busy day at the shop, so I don't think I'm gonna film out there because of how busy it is. But I think I know what I want. I definitely want rummy noses, because I think this will just fit that vibe. They're not fully red, but they've got that hint of redness about them. And the other fish I want, I'm not 100% sure, but there's a couple of species out there. I think I, yeah, I think I know which one it'll be. We're back from the fish shop. So as always, Maiden at Aquatics Taunton is five minutes up the road from me. That uh, is my go-to shop. Obviously, I worked there for a long time, so it just makes sense. I know exactly what they do with their fish. Oh, sorry, very rustily. What they do with their fish, how they treat them, how they look after them. Martin, who runs the shop now, is a very, very close friend of mine. So yeah, we've got the fish. Rummy noses, 100%. They're the right option. And these guys. And I'm really excited to see how these react to the tank. Now we're just going to spend a bit of time acclimatising them. Mine put them in massive bags for me. Who's in here? <gasps> Those are the ones I wanted to keep secret. I'm going to place them out the way. I might have to take some water out because Martin has put these in huge bags for me. Yeah, so we went for a little group of 18 rummy noses. Now what I'd suggest, if this is your first tank, then I'd suggest going for less fish you know, probably six or eight at a time, something like that, because then it doesn't overwhelm everything. Obviously, I've been doing this a long time. I know exactly what I'm doing. 18, well, actually 18 plus 10, I think, 28 fish. 28 fish going into this tank for me is going to be no problem. This is my full-time job. I know exactly what I'm doing. The filter is now mature because of the media I've used from other tanks. But once you get used to a tank, you can do it way quicker. But I'd say if this is your first tank or you've only just started keeping fish, I'd certainly take it a lot slower than what I'm doing here today. There will be fish added to this tank at a later date. I'm thinking maybe a few Corydoras, but maybe an Epistogramma, like Dwarf Cichlid, I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep it as Tetras. But to get these guys acclimatised, even though Maiden Ed's only five minutes up the road from me, I'll just let them sit for half an hour on the surface to warm up a little bit and get used to the temperature. And then we'll cut the tops of the bags bit of our water in the bag every five or ten minutes over the course of another half an hour or so and then we can release them. I've drained a little bit of water out because otherwise this is going to overflow this tank but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the light off for a bit that way they can acclimatize in a little bit more duller lighting rather than this bright light above their heads. Uh, 
an hour. Okay, right, now let's get them acclimatised. So it's been about 45 minutes now. They're all up to temperature. I've been putting some of their water or their new water in here. Obviously because of the botanicals that I'm using in here, the water is probably gonna be softer one than what they're used to out at the shop. But yeah, taking a little bit of time. They seem to be great. They're all buzzing about. These little guys have, you see them? No, you can't. But yeah, these little guys are buzzing about. I think we're ready to release. Now that we're fully acclimatized, we can get the fish in. So what I've got first is the rummy noses. Now I've turned the lights onto like that yellowy hue. So it's quite gentle for them going in. So yeah, we've got 18 little rummy noses to go in here. Now with the lighting set like this, it should just chill them out a little bit more rather than being blinded by that bright light. Oh, they're looking so good already. The red's gone in their face, but that's just a little bit of stress and a new environment. Once they settle down in here, that'll come back quite quickly. All right, let's have a look at these other fish because I do really like these. The other fish we've got to go in here are these awesome little hockey stick pencil fish. So they've got quite a different swimming motion to the rummy noses. These guys will poke their heads up sort of towards the surface and will hover sort of in midwater rather than shoaling around like the rummies. Got a group of 10 of these. And I think these are gonna look really cool. Not the brightest of fish, but a really interesting swimming habit. Oh yes, look at them. The way they're waiting for something to drop into the water. All right, let's let these guys settle for a couple of hours and then we'll come back and see how they're getting on. Right, so it's actually the next day and they have settled so, so well. I'm really loving how this turned out. I'm really enjoying how different it is to the two other tanks in this room. Obviously I've got the crystal tetras, which is quite a green sort of natural style sort of thing going on. And then I've got the chili rasboras, which is quite, an, again, a green sort of hardscape heavy aquarium. Um, and this one, again, hardscape is quite strong in this, but those different colours and those different hues in this tank have just oh, just made it so different to the other tanks. The Ludwigias and the Altenantheras, the Crips have gone for a bit of a melt, but it's not the end of the world, that's standard for Crips, but everything seems to be settling really well. I might have to play with the lighting a little bit. I've put a bit more white into the lighting now, so it's a bit brighter, but I have been running on quite a yellow setting. So I might need to play with the lighting brightness as time goes on, but I'm not overly worried. I'm really happy with the choice of rummy noses. Like they haven't fully got their color yet, obviously, because they've only been in a few days now. So I think it will take them a bit more time to get used to the tank. But that red and that black and white striped tail is just looking so, so good. And it's only gonna get better with age. They're only gonna get a bit bigger and a bit better. So I really can't wait to see them mature in here. I do want to put an Epistogramma species in here probably. I can't make my mind up between Corydoras or Epistogrammas. I think I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Um, it's something that I've been thinking of doing, a bit more of an interactive aquarium, I suppose, where I let you pick what's going to go in there. Um, so I'll put a post up on my community tab on YouTube probably over the next week or two when I'm ready to get the Epistogrammas in there. So watch out for that post and I'll let you guys pick what species goes in there. I have absolutely fallen in love with the little hockey stick pencils. They're just so cool. The way that they sit in the branch and they just sort of dabble in the water and sit there, just the coolest thing. As much as they're not an exciting fish in colour, they are an exciting fish in style, in how they act, in characteristics, I suppose.
I added some of the uh, jackfruit leaves in here as well, just to add a different shape and texture. And I've also added a couple tucked into the Thalumbo pods up in the top. That just means they've got a bit of shading and a little bit of sort of cover that the fish can dart in underneath. I really like the different aspect of the little spotlight, the fluval prism. I think it just adds a little bit of a different element to the tank. It's almost like having two different tanks. The fish react to the bright lights a little bit different. So when the uh, lower light is on, the pencil fish come out a little bit more and they're a little bit more active. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I certainly have. Like it's one of my longest builds, I suppose. Most of the time I get a build done in a day. So it's sort of scaped, planted and all finished within a day. This one, because it evolved over the course of like a week or so where I was coming back to it, putting some more wood in or changing up sort of certain bits of it. It evolved really nicely and I really enjoyed doing it. So I think I'm gonna do some sort of longer builds as it were take a bit more time over certain ones in the future because i think it's just a little bit more enjoyable and you can change aspects as you go if something doesn't fit right you can change it i don't know what i'm going to do next but i definitely want to do a bigger version of this somewhere like 200 liter sort of black water tanned water sort of thing going on yeah i really want it maybe some big angel fish i don't know anyway just thinking now someone said in my last video you always sign it off with i'll see you in the next one i honestly don't know what else to say so um yeah i'll uh, see you in the next one